Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I want to test a claim that was made about the new AI before Definitive Edition was released. I thought there was a video of it from E3, but I haven't been able to track that down, but I did find it in an article. The exact claim is if you put one AI non-cheating of the Definitive Edition version against seven of the original that do cheat, it just wipes the floor with them. No problem every time. Now, there's no question the new AI is a step up from HD, which itself is a huge step up from the old Conqueror's AI. In a free-for-all, it does win in the way described there, but I'm wondering if they actually mean having one against seven all on the same team. Well, let's try it out. So here we have a game set up where I have seven of the old Conquer version AIs all on the same team, and we've got the new AI as team two. I am going to pick its civilization as Chinese just because I think it's a civilization the AI is quite good at playing and I want to give it the best shot possible to do this. For the Age of Conquerors AI though, I'm just going to let it go random even though it might get some of the new civilizations and not know quite as well how to play them. On the right you can see I've got pretty standard game settings going for Arabia, extreme difficulty and regular resources and all that stuff. So let's check it out. You can see here in the blue we have the new Definitive Edition AI, of course playing as the Chinese. They have three extra villagers and no food at all. So first thing you do always is you grab Loom and you can see that it knows to do that. A little worried here even just thinking about how many Civ bonuses they're up against at once. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an uphill fight, but don't be intimidated man, we're all cheering for you. Well, let's check out what they're up against. Uh, to the left here we have the Kumans, which are a really good civilization. I'm not sure the AI is going to fully make use of the multiple town centers and knows how good the step lancers are and stuff like that, but we'll see. Definitely a strong civilization. Moving on, and oh, there's his plan. He's going to flush with ranged units. So, feudal rush with ranged units. Uh, that's actually probably what I would be doing as well here. And here we've got the Koreans. Of course, they've got their new wood discount and have always been a really strong late game civilization. So, this is where you want them, not right beside the person they're matched up against. So, good sieve. And moving on, we've got the Hans who have just found their starting goats at almost two minutes. Yikes. What, they've been chopping wood for two minutes? Hmm. Anyway, so yeah, the Hans, strong civilization. And um, yeah, just off to a rough start there. And scouting, man, it's important. And next in the bottom here, we have the Turks. Now, this is a really strong civilization you want to just boom up a lot. And this actually worked out pretty well for them. They happen to be the furthest away on the map because really, if they just go straight for Imperial Age and get out some gunpowder units, that's gonna be really strong. I'm not sure the AI is gonna know to do that, but I'm curious to see if it does. And moving on, way over here, we have the Malians. Not quite as bad as the Goths, but I can't imagine a Chinese player would be super happy to be up against them in the late game because of course they have their champion line with extra Pierce armor and Chinese are going to be going probably for mostly archers in the late game. Not sure the AI is going to know to exploit that, but we'll see. And of course, already on their berries and grabbing from multiple cheap at the same time. Not ideal. And now, of course, they run out and they're going to have to send everything to berries. Like, scouting is so important to grab uh, to have a consistent early game here. And the AI really shows that. So next over here in the gray we have the Khmer, again another really strong late game civilization, kind of like the Turks or the Koreans. And Khmer of course have scorpions and ballista elephants and just elephants in general, just a lot of really really tanky units that are going to be pretty good. And last one here is the Bulgarians in the red, which is the closest to our hero, the Definitive Edition AI. Could very well be the first target. Now Bulgarians are quite good, I'm not sure the new AI, or sorry, the old AI is necessarily going to know how to make Kray posts and get the most out of them, and that's part of what I'm interested in seeing here, is how they actually handle all this. And this is a good example here of why the new AI is better, as you can see here, it's already luring boar. The old AI, they don't do that. They take all their sheep and then they just send everything over to berries. It's pretty inefficient in terms of collection rate and also makes them pretty reliant on farms early on, you'll see they tend to get a pretty good farm eco. Like we've already got farms coming up at five and a half minutes. That's very early. You can see uh, generally players will take both of their boar first and then maybe put a couple of farms, but sometimes you can also try to delay them in order to get horse collar first, which is a little more efficient, but you just have fewer food sources happening. So a couple ways to do it. So I'm gonna speed up here, just pretty typical stuff happening in the dark age. 
I don't know. I'm really interested to see from the old AI what their strategy is because it can be pretty passive sometimes. And I think that's what the new AI is going to have to rely on is not so much trying to outboom all of them, but to at least rush and quickly take out a couple of them. Because if you can take out even two of them, it might be able to outboom five. I just don't think it can outboom seven. You got to think in terms of population limit, you've got 200. They've got 1400 population space. To work with and that's really tough to play against generally when you're against multiple weaker opponents like this you try to rush at least one or two of them and take them out before they can really actually reach their potential and you can see here we're going up with 23 villagers so this does that's pretty quick and definitely going to plan to spend a little bit of time in the feudal age here and we've already seen its strategy on the left there that it's going to be going uh, for feudal units. Now, flesh can mean a couple of different things here, but it did say ranged units, so uh, you would think that means archers. And so we're getting the barracks down so that we can build the archery range as soon as it hits uh, the next stage. And kind of smart here that's picking up some deer as well. Sometimes it'll push them, but in this case you don't really have to. And there's the archery range coming down right away. Just nice to see. Ideally you want to have your wood set up so that you can have two archery ranges. You can see grabbing those boar mean they have some berries left over that they can use now. Whereas the older AI has to use a lot of extra farms at this point. That just makes it harder for them to make military buildings and gives the new AI a bit of a window it might be able to exploit right now. And we do have a second archery range coming down working on archers. I think that makes a lot of sense. Hmm. Maybe a little defensive spearman there in case you get scout rushed. I don't think that's going to happen though. The old AI is usually not super aggressive early on. And, oh, that's an exposed woodline. I don't know if it's quite scouted it yet, though. So let's see. Can we... Oh, so it has. Okay. So that's really weird. Scouting? Hang on. What? <laughs> uh, did it just send its scout off to die in the corner? Well, that's that might be a problem. But at least it does know that... Purple's here, so I think purple's going to be the first threat. It's pretty unfortunate it's already down a scout, actually, because it's not going to know very much about the map now, even where the extra golds and stuff are. That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, and yeah, I don't actually see the scout running around anywhere. No, he's scouting with the spearman now. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Not sure what happened to the scout cavalry. Maybe got in a little fight in the corner or something. And we are coming up on 15 minutes. This is when you would like to be hitting somebody if you're going for archers. I mean, you should probably hit them by 14 minutes is kind of what I aim for personally. And to at least be getting your archers out and heading toward the opponent. But it just seems to be massing them up and almost exploring here without attacking. I think this might be a, a little bit of a mistake. I think it should be sending these forward immediately because the old AI is not going to have anything. Yeah, it's just no military you can see all of them only have their scout and the new ai has eight military go use it man go take these go yeah so they're just kind of hanging out i don't think that's the the best move here but we'll see hard to say so let's check in on where everybody else is at everybody seems to be going blacksmith and market so we're trying to do a fast castle and we can see reds even in the castle age i didn't even see that okay well that's pretty good then in fact a bunch of them are in the castle age hang on let's see Almost all of them are in the castle age now. And this could be a problem if all the other AIs who are reaching castle age have gone straight there. Okay, at least we are going out with these archers now, but you don't want them to get multiple town centers up. Like, we see Red's already getting a second town center up, which means now, instead of being up against seven other town centers, we're up now against 10 or 14. But I do like this. We're getting a little bit of a raid on one of them. Still, though, this is five minutes too late. I think, but that's a pretty good army, and we've even got a little bit of upgrades on there. This could be a tough game, I think, here for for purple, although we're getting a little hung up here on this lumber camp. I think we want to go raid this gold, and then, I mean, if I were controlling this right now, could probably kill purple in two minutes. You would just put a couple of archers around the area, put them on stand ground, and that would be that. But it just seems to want to attack this lumber camp for some reason. Oh, there we go. So purple ran out and seems to be successfully luring blue into the town center. Uh, nope, don't do that. Nope. Okay. Well, I was just going to throw the whole army away. 
It hurts extra because the upgrades are all coming in right now too. That wasn't the brightest move ever. Okay, so we delayed Castle Age here, I'm trying to get this plan straight. We delayed Castle Age to get feudal units out, sat around with the feudal units, and then sent them all off to die into a town center. And we're still the score lead, so it kind of shows you the competition it's up against right now. So we got our second town center coming out, everyone's Castle Age. I think it was actually the last one to get to Castle Age. And I got to feel like that was the window. And you can see how exposed these are. You can see how a, a real player would be able to exploit this by just coming in with a few archers and just hit all of these AIs. And I, I do wish the new AI was just a little bit more aggressive in sort of understanding that. In fact, I'd say it's more important to be extra aggressive in getting your units out when you're outnumbered and don't just play defensive. And what's it doing right now? So it's decided purple's too tough and so it's going to instead go knocking on red store here and hopefully manage to avoid getting taken out by this town center. And this is another major difference between the old AI and the new one. The new AI does not wall, whereas the old AIs do. And I think it gives them quite a big advantage. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, that seems like a really useful wall, just in case... I mean, you never know, maybe there could be another player joins the game late and they just come in from the side of the map and, you know, who's laughing now if they're held out by that wall? I can see how it would be easier to program it to just build a wall 20 tiles away or whatever from its town center than it would be to try to teach it that the side of the map can also be a wall, but I don't know, I don't even know how you would program any of this, so I assume that's hard to avoid. All right, so we've got a little bit of a, we've got a three town center boom, not bad. We've got a mangonel coming in, can sometimes give the AI some trouble. Nah, it's got that cleaned up pretty easy. Looking at the score, it's definitely the best player here by quite a bit. I'm just not sure it's gonna be able to beat all seven. I don't, I don't know guys, I wanna believe, but uh, it's tough at this point. I think there was a chance to at least knock out purple and maybe even green there if they just kinda rolled through and took out villagers, but. Uh, at this point, you're really trying to outboom, and two of them are even in Imperial Age right now. Didn't even notice that. Which is a pretty good time to be Imperial before 30 minutes. I think for an AI, that's pretty good. But again, a little bit of indecision here. We're just sort of sending our units around. Luckily, haven't really been raided yet by anything. We've got some forward, very aggressive barracks here. Every AI seems to want to drop the barracks. And Definitive Edition AI is going to have none of that. Still walling up. And these lone mangonels from red. Uh, this one's kind of got the AI confused though. Not quite sure what to do here. There we go. I like that it will actually use the battering ram to target them sometimes. Uh, nope, got scared. Like, alright, now we'll do it. Nope, nope. Okay, now I'm gonna do it. For real. Nope. <laughs> Hang on, what? Was that the old AI repairing with a villager? That's weird, the old AI doesn't do that. Hang on, what's up? This is playing better than the old AI does. That was a little suspicious. I think the old AI actually knows some stuff that it definitely didn't before, because that's new, which just means that's even harder for the new AI if the old one knows some tricks as well. And although this is old AI stuff, just putting a watchtower in the middle of nowhere. And it loves to put these town centers in places where it's clear all around it instead of right up against resources. That's such an old AI thing to do. We see the new one will actually squeeze them right up against resources, which I think is the better way to go. And like on the stone and stuff. And put down a castle, I think that's good. It does love, I know from the past, the AI loves to make the uh, Elite Chuko News, which is a great unit. I think that's actually a good call. Starting to get some raids here from Yellow as the Malians, sending in a couple of these knights here. Looks like we've got some new players getting in on the action here. We've got some cavalry archers coming in. Now normally by 36 minutes, if you just had 12 cavalry archers or 15 or whatever this is, uh, that wouldn't really be a threat. But the problem is when there's so many AI, just dealing with one more of these when you already have your hands full becomes really overwhelming really quickly. We'll see, but this is why you gotta take out a few of them early on. The score still looks pretty good though. In fact, I think it's extending the lead. I don't know, man. I, this is a... Uh, that villager half-killed that dismounted conic. 
They're not strong units. Nice to see that the new AI is actually at a point now it can get rid of these barracks and it seems to have some decent military numbers and a bit of siege out. You can see a knight in there. Hopefully it just decides to push out after this. And I do kind of wish the new AI would wall up here because I feel like it's taking the brunt of this on its economy and its town centers and it's losing a bunch of villagers here. It probably didn't have to if it would just wall this a little bit. That being said, we've got a pretty good army here. Let's uh, let's check this out. So they definitely have the biggest military, though they certainly don't outnumber all of the enemy military anymore. And just town center. I'm wondering if that was a castle. That'd be a very aggressive castle. I'd approve of that. Looking back home at their economies, uh, seem to have a lot of farms and stuff. Definitely some military that isn't even being used. I'm not sure where these guys are going. Uh, okay. What is going on? Why don't you just go out this way? Whatever, just AI things. And we do actually have a, a pretty forward castle. And petards, and what are the petards gonna break down? There's no walls to break down here. I'm just gonna go after units, I guess. <laughs> One petard. I finally got somebody, I think. And seeing a lot of cavalry archers out of the AI right now, which uh, kind of works for the elite skirmisher spam that the new AI is going for. So I was looking around at the economies here while they're just skirmishing at the front. And the old AI is doing pretty good. We've got multiple town centers, pretty good farming economies. This player seems to be a little further behind. Um, yeah, just don't seem quite as developed. And trade is actually going to be a pretty big, pretty big factor here. Because just think about Chinese, once they run out of gold, they don't have Chuko News anymore. I don't know, just trash. That's going to be really tough to fight against seven AI that have gold when you're just using trash units. But look at that score. It's almost double each of the other ones. Normally that'd be a really good sign. But uh, yeah, hard to say. I feel like we haven't really done any damage to anybody, but I don't know, we're making a move here. So we've got the Elite Chico New. Like I said, it loves to make those. We've also got some Elite Skirmisher mixed in. Nothing wrong with that. And a pretty successful boom. We've got 133 villagers. Everybody else is on 71-ish. So you can see it definitely outbooms the other one, and while also having more military. So it's using its population a lot more. All the rest are about a half population, looks like. Kind of 100, just over, just under. Whereas our boy here is fully boomed at 196 population. And sort of make a pretty serious play here on red, while holding really well here. Kind of a weird spot for a castle, but other than that, this area does seem quite defended. And I like the idea of a castle, I just wish it was up on the hill get the hill bonus instead of having the hill bonus against it. And a few of these Kipchaks, completely unupgraded though, so probably won't be that scary. But you can see they fire a bunch of different arrows, so you can be deceptive. Actually, these two units remind me a little bit of each other. Yeah, you can see that hail of arrows there. And this is a pretty successful, really, I think the siege ramps are doing the work here. They can just blast through everything, and everything here seems to be a ranged unit. So doing pierce damage to these rams, which 195 pierce armor. Yeah, no, I, yeah, that score's pretty good. Okay, I, I take it back. Maybe we've got a bit of a chance here. We're using these siege rams in front with the elite Chico news. It's a good combo. And I think that's part of why they're so good with the Chinese is they know how to play them in the early game. And they also know how to make use of them in the late game. Yeah, like, this is very new behavior. The old AI did not know how to do this. Where they would actually repair the onagers. This onager is just wrecking. Guys, come on, just charge it. Hmm. This side's going really well, though. Like I said, actually taking out red. I wouldn't be surprised if red resigns here in a couple minutes. Hard to say. The old AI can be a, maybe a little bit too reluctant to resign. Yeah, just the score. You can tell it's... I'll say this, even if it doesn't win, it's clearly the best player here. I mean, to thrive under this much pressure, you can just see the villagers, the military it makes. It even seems to transition from booming into a lot of villagers into losing villagers and replacing that with more military. Oh no, take out this trebuchet. Oh, I lost a whole castle. Yeah, as Chinese, you really need your castles if you're going for this. Uh, this all elite Chuko new spam. You gotta keep all your castles alive. And red's pretty much dead here. Uh, what economy do we have from red? 
Red has 35 villagers, so one down. And we're not really seeing a huge threat over here. War Wagon's starting to come in. I do feel like there's some colors we haven't seen a lot of. Like, yeah, we have the Turks. This is the most AI army ever, man. <laughs> this miscellaneous siege, some regular skirmishers at 50 minutes, some hand cannons, and some hussars with a couple cavaliers mixed in with no upgrades, just in one long train here. It's just such an AI army. I love it. Uh, this is a pretty serious raid though, and we don't have a castle up front anymore. That's why a castle a little bit further back or up on this hill would have been better. And because we're actually getting our economy hit pretty hard here. While at the same time, losing a bit of steam here. We lost the elite skirmishers and two canoes. Just a few left and a couple of siege rams trying to push forward, but the pressure on blue is getting real here. It's disrupting the economy. I think we're yeah, we're only down to 17 farmers right now. I think that was up at 40 at one point. Still 72 lumberjacks. That's a lot of lumberjacks. But uh, the farming economy is getting really disrupted. Glad to see we're putting up more castles here. Train up the Elite Two Canoes. I mean, the score's still looking great, but I'm sensing the tide is turning here a little bit. Especially with the, uh, the low number of farmers. Like, we got to have at least 40 farmers here to keep churning out units. We're not able to stay at 200 population. I keep saying we as if you know, I'm playing as definitive edition. I feel like I'm coming across a little biased here. But obviously I'm cheering for it. Come on, you have to cheer for an underdog like this. Uh, things aren't looking great though because this push has stopped. Red is basically eliminated. I think it's got a little bit of an economy, but now we're just getting these waves of miscellaneous units. Coming in, and I really want to see another big push here and get the population back up to 200 because there's no way you can do this if you aren't maxing out your population. Even with 132 villagers, we're not banking a lot of extra resources here. But I mean, that being said, it, it's not doing that bad, and it's pushing over here on this side. These Kipchaks have any. Still not really any upgrades. It's just got chemistry and elite. Yeah, these onagers are going to be dangerous though. Yeah, you can see they, they take out a lot of them. And how are we doing over here? This area is not too bad. I like we're putting another castle. I don't know if that's an accident, but that is... I mean, it's not the best location for a castle. It'd be nicer a little bit more up on the hill or something, but... Uh, just having something here, if not a wall, because I get the new AI doesn't wall. But you gotta have some kind of defense there, because the AI is definitely focusing on that area. This is looking like we're gonna get overwhelmed here, I think. Even the push on this side, it's kind of installed out. Even though we're more than double the score of anybody else, uh, it's still looking a little dangerous to me. It's hanging on, don't get me wrong. It's hard to find ways to move forward when you're under this much pressure. It's not just the AIs making bad decisions here. It's doing really well, actually. I like that it's spamming Chukunu and the Siege Ram combination was really good. The problem is, eventually you're gonna run out of gold doing that. And the other AIs, They've got trade, so they're not going to run out. I guess they're not really trading. A little bit. Yeah, this isn't one of those games you can just wait out seven opponents, though. The seven opponents can just wait you out. I do like to see that we've got back up to 40 farms, though, and back up to 200 population, so kind of lost a little bit of a battle there, probably a battle event, but has definitely come back from that. And kill a death ratio, you can see, is just going ham. It's got 600 kills, less than 400 deaths. It's pretty good. And I don't think we got time to um, to take up buildings like this. I think we got to move forward. We got to put these units to use. And we'll have fights and skirmishes all over. And it's just got to be a little bit more focused here on what we're trying to do. Which I would say either you got to keep pushing through here. It's going to be tough with castles and stuff here. Uh, I still think they should be going for purple. That's the direction I'd be heading. I mean, shore up this front side and then go for purple. But this is getting dangerous now. We've got trebuchets out here. And these units are just going to start getting fully upgraded over time. Like, the old AI is slow, but it will eventually. You can see, like, the cavalry archers. It does get all the upgrades eventually. And still doing a great kill death ratio. Almost 700 to 400. Almost. And starting to get trebuchets on this side too. Yeah, this if this castle goes down again, we're just gonna be opening big raids up here. 
And it's pretty good spam. I'm not gonna lie, that's a lot of Chukunu, especially. Yeah, it's maintaining 200 population, which is tough with a unit with that much turnover. And that you need castles in order to train. And finding a little bit of disadvantage here with the hill. Still a good matchup though, I think, for the elite Chukunus here. And definitely have the numbers to take that one. And where are we going? We're going way out here to grab gold. Yeah, so this is what happens is you run out of gold. Oh, you still got some back here. Uh, yeah, so this is now open to raiding. And once you're out of gold, uh, you're in big trouble in a situation like this. You can't just spam um, elite skirmishers and win. So I like to see it going out there to grab the gold. I think it's got to establish that, though, with a bit more of an army. You know, that being said, it cleaned up this side. This is what I like to see. It's pushing against purple. We need to keep going and keep destroying the next AI. You got to keep the line moving. So I really like to see this because red's basically out of it, right? So that's one less player that you've got using their 200 population space. It's only got two military. And purple's down to nine military. I mean, this is pretty good. I think you just keep rolling through with these siege rams. The siege rams, oh, this is the purple siege rams. But these siege rams do the work. You don't need trebuchets, you can just use siege ramps. And yeah, this is great, they just keep pumping them out. I love that. And a little bit of harassment over here from the Malians. You can see with that plus five pierce armor and it being pretty good, especially against skirmishers, stuff like that. And make another play for this gold here. Almost be nice to see it defend that with a castle or I guess can't afford a castle, but a tower for sure. And take out one of purple's castles here, which is good. Seems like we're making progress. Fewer those Kipchaks they can put out, the better. And pretty easy to see, you know, if we took away three of these AIs, I think it would have steamrolled purple and red long ago and been able to move on, but it's just seven. It's just so hard. Hmm. Still maintaining a, a good population, though. I like to see that. And these waves of units, again, before we were seeing waves of units that weren't upgraded, and now we are seeing waves of units that are upgraded, and it just ended up being so much stronger. And meanwhile, we start running out of gold and stuff like that. Uh, yellow's making a big push over here, it looks like. Yep, and we're even bringing some rams. That's a little scary. Rams and trebuchets, don't like to see. And green supporting purple here. Purple seems to be safe at the moment, trying to rebuild town center and a castle. And that's what's annoying, is when you make a push, you get rid of their castle, and then you get pushed back by an ally, and they rebuild the castle. And meanwhile, you've just spent a bunch of gold. So I can see they're transitioning into halberdiers now, transitioning into skirmishers. You can see we've only got 720 gold. I mean, lots of gold miners, but I don't think... It says 38 gold miners. I don't think they're all working on gold, though. I think they're tasked over here, so as they're walking over, it's calling them gold miners. Yeah, so all these, these are counting as gold miners right now. So, oh yeah, it looks like you've got 30 of them, but look at that income. It's just relics only for right now. And this is the position you don't want to be in, is where you got to spam trash against AI that doesn't have to spam trash. And pretty big raid incoming here, taking out a lot of these villagers. Which, you know, if there's no more gold that you can access, you really don't need these guys. Fair enough, you can maybe make a few more farms and number jacks, but if you are going to go for trash, you really need to spam a lot of it. So I don't think they necessarily need 130 villagers here if they're just going to spam trash. And this is going to be a really annoying castle once this goes up. And again, we're not really seeing any of those siege rams. Like those rams that were making such a huge difference there are gone now. And even these elite Chico news are going to be really hard to replace here at this point. And Finally lost that town center. Yeah, but trebuchets on the outside, it doesn't really know what to prioritize taking down trebuchets. And this is starting to get a little steamrolly. Starting to get a snowball effect here, where there's just so many units. You can't take good fights. It's really hard to maintain that 200 population. And you can see it's not even making military right now. We've got three TCs queuing up villagers, and we've got a little bit in terms of uh, military trying to be snuck out, but all these farms no longer working. I think this is the beginning of a, a pretty quick downward spiral here. Just not quite able to use its early advantages enough to knock out these players before 
their economies were fully built up and they had all of their upgrades. And at this point, how do you get traction against this? Only a few farms are working. We've got 30 idols and we're down to 129 populations here. Military's down to 16. I don't think there's coming back from this. Could be wrong. I mean, the score looks fantastic. Three times the score. I, this is what I would expect if you were steamrolling all of these. But I think just didn't quite get purple out early enough. And even red is still being annoying and still sending in a few units. See them showing up every once in a while. And just too many trebuchets, too many gold intensive units, too many different types of units. You can't even properly counteract all of these. And even starting to get some siege onagers coming in. Cummins have everything. It's so ridiculous. You even have siege onager. Yeah, and we're getting all the these probably elite uh, no, not elite war again, but you can see they got all the upgrades. There's so many upgrades for all these units coming in now. Like these are strong units and they're just getting spammed in here. And just your whole economy is idle all the time, even though it looks like you've got, you know, so many units. All these are counting as farmers and lumberjacks, I'm sure, as they just run around being killed. Yeah, I think this is over. We can just uh it'll honestly be any second now, I'm sure. Unless it's gonna be spiteful. But everything's on fire. Nothing's really working. <laughs> it's gonna lose a little bit of performance there. Everything's on fire, nothing's working properly. We're not making we're making two skirmishers right now. I don't even know where you'd send those. As soon as they've got this many trebuchets and you can't fight that off. Yeah, it's kinda over right there. We're even getting pushed here on this side, more trebuchets on this side. I don't know why it's not calling it right now. GG man, it's okay. Put up a great fight and even it made it competitive for a long time there, but I'm not sure what the condition is it's waiting for. Maybe when the town center is destroyed or something, it'll call it. Yeah, it didn't even wait that long. Well, you know, it had a really good start. Kind of slipped away sometime after killing Red and either before or during the failed attack on Purple, I'd say. I mean, you can see the completely unharassed economies. Like, how do you outproduce all of these economies? I like the little towers everywhere for the Koreans. That's cute. You can see the Huns not really prioritizing farms here. They seem to have fewer farms than everybody else. I think just going for a lot of cavalry archers maybe, so doing a lot of gold and wood instead because they have about the same number of villagers as everybody else. And even a bunch more units in the back here they weren't even using. Oh, didn't look at uh, this one. Yeah, and even Red managed to hang on. Like, Red never actually resigned. So let's take a look at the stats here. So by far the biggest score, but that doesn't always translate into map control, especially when you're up against so many other players. And the biggest army was actually the Turks, which were the civilization furthest away from the blue player. Didn't go for any Janissaries or Bombard Cannons or any of that characteristic stuff, but yeah, still contributed a lot. And nice unit kills though, I like that. And a ton of units lost, not quite as good of a ratio, but by the end there, I think they just lost a lot of units, basically for free. Managed to collect a lot of resources though, pretty good economy. And yeah, so like we saw in the game, had about double the villagers, so I really think you'd be able to take four consistently every time, I think. But I, th I think seven's just too much, unless it is able to know to rush them and take them out right away, which to be fair, maybe sometimes it does, but I wouldn't say it does that every time. I'm sort of looking for, the main goal here was to see if we think it could beat seven AI every time, and not so much. I mean, you can see there was a period here where Hit Feudal came out with the army, everybody else fast castled, with Blada being the slowest because he couldn't find his sheep, but yeah, they had no army, like that was when you hit. And then even when it went to castle, a bunch of these didn't have anything, they were just going to Imperial Age. So if you targeted any of those, still probably could have taken them out. But once you hit Imperial and you try to boom, they're all booming as well. And you can see the, the Dark Shades is their military and it just kept expanding their military. Although purple never really got going there. And red was pretty close, but managed to come back a little bit and even contribute a bit of military. So overall, I gotta say, no, I don't think it can take on seven of the old AIs every time. Now that being said, the old AI does actually seem to be better. Saw a couple of tricks that it was doing that the old AI had never done before. 
Now I have confirmed that if it's in a free for all against seven of the old AIs, then yes, it will win and it does steamroll it in a way very similar to what was described in the article. Either way, it was an impressive performance and definitely kept it competitive for a lot longer than I thought it was gonna be able to. Really shows how far the AI has come. But that's all for this one. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.